In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. May the Lord bestow upon us his blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom now and from to the age, all ages, amen. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, we're continuing our series on the Orthodox Creed. Um, we're more than halfway. <laughs> and uh, today, um, we're going to go more in depth on basically what is considered one of the most essential parts of the Christian faith. Uh, and without it, there would be no Christianity, as we'll see in a minute. Um, so uh, if you have just been joining us, this is kind of like a roadmap of uh, studying the one very important prayer and a proclamation of the Orthodox faith, uh, the creed. Um, and we have discussed who is God. Now we're continuing on what, what he does for us um, because we can't completely understand the, the essence of God, um, but we get to know him more and more as we understand not only who he is, but what he's done for us and what he's constantly doing for us. Um, and this is epitomized in the mission and of the salvation that the Holy Trinity grants to us, uh, especially in the words and life and uh, service of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and so today we'll talk, focus more on the resurrection and ascension, um, uh, focusing on uh, this part of the Orthodox Creed. And on the third day, he rose from the dead, according to the scriptures, ascended to the heavens. He sits at the right hand of his father. And then God willing, after that, we'll continue on to go uh, through um, uh, discuss the second coming, the judgment day, um, and the establishment of the church. Uh, and hopefully that's kind of like uh, where, where we'll uh, conclude. But like we were saying, um, as St. Athanasius writes, he said, this is the very cornerstone or the very center of our faith. Everywhere you hear men speak of it, um, Christ is revealed as God and Son of God. Um, and if he is not God, then we are wasting our time, right? But uh, in addition to that, if he didn't write, raise from the dead, then also we are wasting our time, okay? So um, let's start as we kind of are used to now, we'll go phrase by phrase and then do some comments um, on, on the uh, theology of the concept of the resurrection and ascension in general, okay? So, <clears throat> um, so we start by writing or by reading when it says on the third day, why is this important and what does it mean? Um, and why the church puts it in the creed. So first of all, as the fathers teach us, um, the Lord rose from the dead on the, uh, after three days to prove that his death was a certain death. He didn't faint on the cross, for example. Um, and St. Athanasius says uh, he could have raised his body as soon as he died, right? The instant he died, or even in the same day on Good Friday, but with good foresight, like as the all-wise God, um, he didn't do this because someone might have doubted that, that Christ died on the cross um, or that death didn't truly take hold of him. Um, so that's why he didn't make his resurrection apparent at once, right? Um, on the flip side of it, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ did not raise his body um, after too long a period of time, right? Um, because like, even as we see with the story of Lazarus in John chapter 11, um, Mary and Martha, or Martha did, did not want, <laughs> and they were afraid even to open um, the, the tomb again because of the smell, because the body they say, the, the starts to corrupt in a sense, um, as, uh, as they were saying, after three days. So Christ came to remove humanity from death and corruption, as St. Athanasius says. Um, so how could he allow his body to be corrupted? Uh, uh, that's why uh, the fathers say he didn't wait after three days. Okay. Um, and some people say, well, is it, was it really three days? Well, it depends on how you count the days. <laughs> um, and so we count the date itself. So if you count Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that's three days. Um, and um, as the Lord refers to 
uh, the prophecy of Jonah. As Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Um, and some people say, well, what, where's the three nights? Um, St. Gregory of Nyssa uh, says <clears throat> um, the third night is, can be considered uh, because you have Thursday night, Friday night, um, Saturday night, right? Or, well, that will say he wasn't, he, he wasn't crucified on, uh, until Friday. Right? So some people say Thursday night considered um, the, the night of his passion uh, when he offered himself in the Last Supper, in the First Communion. Um, that could be one explanation. But St. Gregory of Nyssa says, if you consider the sun being darkened um, in the middle of the day, when Christ was on the cross, that can, could have been considered an evening. <laughs> um, so uh, either way, this is how uh, the church understands um, the, the third day. But why three? Um, the number three uh, represents, um, of course, the Holy Trinity as well. But also, it's, it's not a short time. It's not a long time. Okay. Um, and uh, other people say, well, the, the number eight also refers to the Holy Resurrection. Uh, if the world was created, as we believe, in six days, right? Whether or not those are 24-hour days, our church doesn't necessarily uh, uh, emphasize that, that part because the sun was created on the fourth day. Um, but these are periods of time, right? Um, so uh, the Lord, and the Lord rested on the seventh day, right? So, and we consider uh, that we are still in this seventh day until the Lord will come again. Um, and or until the new the new week or the new life that is um, we consider the eighth day uh, and um, so our week is made up of seven days and the eighth day is the day of the resurrection of Christ or the resurrection of us which hasn't happened yet <laughs> but this is the beginning of the age to come as we'll talk about maybe um, in an, another time um, so basically it's beyond this world or beyond this time or beyond this life okay and so that's why the number eight is significant um, and even in the early church and until now there are some baptismal fonts or even some churches where they um, they make in the shape of an octagon of eight sides for this reason and as the psalms say this is the day that the lord has made which we recite on a Sundays and feast days in the hymns in the beginning of the liturgy um, uh, of the offertory, right? <clears throat> and St. Gregory of Nyssa also says it is the beginning of another creation or a new creation, right? Because the Lord rose um, from the dead and, um, in, and as we'll talk more in detail later, um, he, he came in the spiritual body or the spirit reunited with the body that had died. Um, and uh, the spiritual body took on a new form, a new shape. He says, in this day, the eighth day, or the, the, resurrection, the day of the resurrection, God makes a new heaven and a new earth, as we read in the book of Revelation, right? Um, he says, what kind of heaven? The firmament of faith in Christ, okay? So the new life of the Christian after baptism, right, um, is that we have faith in Christ. Uh, our life is different, right? What kind of earth? Um, a new heart. He created me a clean heart, oh God, a new right spirit within me, okay? So this spirit of resurrection is not just um, on the third day after the Lord died on the cross, and it, but it's also um, on the day that we are baptized as Christians, but it's also hopefully every day after that, um, until the culmination of this eighth day, which will be when um, after the Lord comes to take us to be with him forever. And we'll talk more about that, God willing, um, when we get into the second coming uh, and the judgment day. Um, <clears throat> so uh, that's the third day, okay? <laughs> um, what happened? He rose from the dead, right? As, as, as we believe and as the historians testify. Um, and uh, the Lord Jesus Christ ro rose from the dead by his own power, 
because he is God and he is the one who gives life, right? Um, not the, and, and this resurrection is not like anyone else who, who was raised um, by God's power uh, in the Old Testament or even until now, like even Lazarus, right? right? What's the difference? Um, they rose from the dead, but they died again, right? Um, and they rose um, to be restored to the, the, the same life that they were living before death. But this resurrection is different. Um, he arose in a glorious body, as St. Paul says in Philippians in chapter 3. Um, <clears throat> and he, he rose and he did not die again. Right? And the book of Revelation explains this as well from the mouth of the Lord when he speaks to St. John the Beloved. I am the first and the last, Alpha and Omega. I am he who lives, because God is the life giver, and he rose from the dead and was dead because he died on the cross. Right? And behold, I am alive forevermore. Um, uh, and like we will see, as with him, as with Christ, the Son of Man, so shall we be. Okay, So we live now in the flesh. We will die, but we will live forevermore, God willing, with him. Uh, and <clears throat> then in, also in the book of the Revelation, chapter 4, um, we see the four incorporeal living creatures, um, the angelic beings surrounding the Lord, God on his throne. Each have six wings full of eyes around and within. And they do not rest day or night saying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and who is and who is to come. What is this a reference of? Who was because he took flesh and he died on the cross. Who is, right, because he rose from the dead and who is to come, the second coming. So in this praise and the prayer of the four living creatures, they proclaim Christ's death, resurrection, and second coming, okay? So this praise is, is not to God the Father necessarily or the, the Holy Spirit, but to Christ because he was the one who was, <laughs> meaning he took flesh and he died, okay? okay? Um, so uh, there's much to speak of the resurrection. We don't have much time um, in, in this uh, lecture per se, um, but we can go further more in detail, especially in the Holy 50 Days of the Resurrection, where we have our time to speak of all the mysteries and the beauty um, of this very important feast. Um, <clears throat> so, um, so he rose from the dead according to the scriptures. Of course, when we say the scriptures, we don't necessarily mean especially the scriptures of the New Testament, because they were not even written yet, right, um, at the time of the resurrection. Um, St. Paul does preach, especially in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15, which is an important passage to read um, regarding the resurrection. Um, but according to the scriptures here is the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies of the, the death and resurrection of the Messiah, of the Christ. Right? <clears throat> and here are just a few. We spoke of Isaiah 53 already, but in the Psalms, of which, which the church wisely put in the first hour of the Holy Book of Hours in the Agbeya, because this is the, the beginning of the day, and, and the theme is the resurrection of Christ, because he rose in the, the, the morning, uh, very early Sunday morning. So, uh, or Psalm 15 in the Agbeya, Psalm 16 in, in, in some of the translations of uh, the New Testament. The Lord says by the psalmist's uh, hand, my flesh also will rest in hope. This is the, the death and burial of Christ, right? For you will not leave my soul in Hades, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption, right? Um, meaning, uh, and we'll talk more about this <laughs> again later, but when in the Old Testament, after Adam, everyone who died went into Hades. We call this the waiting place for, um, for death, for, for hell, in a sense, right? And um, because paradise, which is the waiting place for heaven, was not open yet until Christ died on the cross. And he descended into Hades. He um, took all the righteous and he restored them 
to paradise. He opened paradise for them to enjoy, to wait for us to join them, those saints, um, after the second coming when heaven will be opened to all of us at once. Um, <clears throat> so here, this psalm is saying, God, the Father, does not want the Son to see corruption. So that's why, again, three days, not four days, okay? Um, and his soul was not, did not stay in Hades. And the souls of the righteous did not stay in Hades after the cross. But the Lord rose, uh, when, when he rose from the dead, or when he descended into Hades after the cross, he brought all the souls of the righteous to paradise, okay? Um, <clears throat> and if, if you want to study all the prophecies that pertain to the death and passion and burial and resurrection and ascension of our Savior, but especially the passion and death and, and resurrection, um, I encourage you to, to study the, the prayers and the rites and especially the prophecies of Holy Week, um, which is um, basically starts from Palm Sunday or the afternoon of Palm Sunday, all the way until uh, the Feast of the Resurrection, okay? Um, and the church wisely finds almost every one of the prophecies, uh, about maybe 600 of Christ, right? Um, and maybe about more than half of those are pertaining to the to passion and the death of Christ. Um, and every hour we have several prophecies that point to his passion and his death, um, and also his resurrection. The ones pertaining to his resurrection are found especially on um, uh, the end of Good Friday and Bright Saturday, especially Bright Saturday. Um, we see all of the, uh, the prayers and the prophecies and the uh, predictions of the resurrection. Um, <clears throat> we see very clearly on that night. Um, so I encourage you to, to study uh, that with us um, or, or just attend and, and you'll start, uh, <laughs> if, you, if you can stay awake, you, you will see um, how the scriptures point to the resurrection hundreds and sometimes even more than a thousand years before um, the coming of Christ um, the first time. Um, Here's just one, Hosea 5. On the third day, he will raise us up that we may live in his sight, right? Um, another one is the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, which we read on the day of Good Friday, talks also about um, the, the resurrection on the third day. Um, so, <clears throat> um, uh, like we said, St. Paul talks about if there was no resurrection, <laughs> this would all be a waste of time, right? Um, so, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, part of it here, he, he says, If Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? Um, but if there is no resurrection of the dead, then number one, Christ is not risen. Okay? So, if Christ didn't rise, then none of us will rise. And if you don't believe that uh, the body will never rise, then that then you have to also believe that Christ did not rise from the dead. So he's saying, okay, let's just um, uh, continue on this thought. If Christ didn't rise from the dead, then our our preaching is pointless. Our faith is pointless. Uh, Christ, there's no point in Christianity. <laughs> Why? Because we'll just live a few years, even if it's a hundred or something, and die. And end of story. That's a sad ending. <laughs> That's not what we believe. Um, that's why Christians are full of hope and joy and uh, looking towards what's coming after. Um, he says, yes, and we are found false witness of God. So then, you know, the St. Paul, all the apostles, you know, all the preachers of Christianity are liars, like, or false witnesses. Maybe they don't know. <laughs> if, if, if there was no resurrection, then, you know, all that we're talking about is, is empty. Um, because we have testified of God that he, the apostles testified that Christ rose from the dead, um, whom, whom you say he didn't rise, right? Um, for the dead do not rise. If the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. <laughs> Don't believe in anything, right? You're still in your sins. That's even a more important point. Then like, okay, we all sin and the wages of sin is death, like we were saying before. Um, we have no forgiveness of sins. Even if there is a heaven, even if there is a God, 
um, but there's no resurrection, then there's no forgiveness of our sins. Then we can't go to heaven. Because <laughs> um, what communion is light and, and darkness? What communion is the all holy and, and we who are sinners? Um, there's only communion if there's a, a, a possibility and a potential to remove our sins, to forgive our sins, right? So we have to have forgiveness of sins before we can have salvation and eternal life. Um, that's why the priest proclaims at the end of the liturgy that the body and blood of Christ is given to us for salvation, remission of sins, and eternal life. Uh, it's one package. <laughs> you can't have eternal life without forgiveness of sins. Um, we have to remove the filth first before you put on the new clothes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so that's why he says, not, and in addition to that, if Christ didn't rise from the dead, everyone who died before, all the saints, all those who have passed away, would have their life ended. There's, there's no new beginning. There's no other life after that. That's very sad. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of people believe this, but this is a very sad thing to believe. Um, very depressing. <laughs> um, he says, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, like we have hope in Christ that what? He'll get me a good job, that he'll keep me safe um, and protected in this world, that I'll, I'll make a lot of money. Like um, that's kind of a, a sad life to, to have hope in compared to eternal life, right? There's no comparison. Um, but he says, okay, forget that point. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. So thank God we don't have that uh, situation or those circumstances that, that, that doesn't exist for, for us. Um, we, have, we have a new life, a new hope, um, a new future. Um, it's not empty. Um, <clears throat> so some other things, okay, prove to me that Christ rose from the dead. We can't we have to believe, but there are a lot of proofs, as St. John Chrysostom says, if you look at all the precautions that they took, um, that the Romans and the Jews took um, for the burial of Christ, it proves even more that he rose from the dead. <laughs> Everything they tried to fight against um, Christianity, um, it came to to bite them in, in the rear, right? It came to even prove Christianity more. <laughs> um, so that's why you don't fight against God. You fight against God, you know, he's just going to overpower uh, you even more. <laughs> um, so, so what were some of the precautions that the, the Romans and the Jews took um, uh, so that there wouldn't be a belief in the resurrection? Because they knew this, this, this prediction um, and Christ was, was, was telling them, destroy this, temple in three days i'll raise it up right um it was the apostles that kind of forgot these words and they were afraid for their lives and they went into hiding right but but the the pharisees and the jewish leaders said wait a second we have to make sure that these people don't believe in him anymore right so what did they did um so well one thing they they said okay let's prove or let's kill him in in public hundreds and probably thousands of people witnessed the death of Christ on the cross, right? Um, and there's many historical accounts, especially Roman and Jewish and Christian, of course, to prove that um, uh, number one, there was a man named Jesus of Nazareth who died and was crucified, right? And um, not only that, but there is a Jewish story, Josephus, right, who corroborates the events in the gospel, um, that Jesus appeared to them alive at, on the third day. You can read his writings. Um, the church doesn't um, necessarily um, put these writings on a pedestal, but they're his, historical event accounts, um, which, which fall in line with the historical accounts mentioned in the gospel. Um, and this is a third party. This is not a believer. <laughs> uh, this is a Jewish general who, who later on had, had a talent of, of writing historical accounts and became a historian. Um, and it helps us understand some of the background of, of what happened during these times. Um, so the Lord had the public death on the cross and he had public appearance. He rose in secret, but um, uh, I mean, uh, he rose in secret. The angel rolled the stone from the door of the tomb. Um, and the, 
uh, the Lord appeared for 40 days um, uh, to various people, various eyewitnesses. Uh, and in the Gospels, there's over 10 specific accounts that's mentioned um, by the various evangelists and by St. Paul um, in 1 Corinthians 15. Like the Lord appeared to Mary Magdalene in the garden, as we know in John chapter 20 that we read on the Gospel uh, of the Feast of the Resurrection, also in the end of the Gospel of Mark. Um, and he also appeared to St. Mary Magdalene again with the other Mary at the end of the Gospel of St. Matthew. He appeared to St. Peter. Um, he appeared to the two disciples on the road to Emmaus in Luke 24, um, which we read the day after the resurrection feast. Um, he appeared to the 11 disciples, uh, sorry, the 10 disciples without St. Thomas um, uh, on the day of the resurrection. And then again on the eighth day, <laughs> or Thomas Sunday, he appeared to the 11 disciples. He appeared up by the, to the seven disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. He appeared to more, more than 500 people um, at once in, in Galilee. Um, and he, uh, he appeared when he ascended to heaven on the Mount of Olives in the book of Acts. Um, so there's many accounts um, of, of the Lord showing himself after um, his crucifixion, okay? Um, not only that, but the solid rock tomb, thanks to Nicodemus, was, was, um, was found empty, um, this proof of the resurrection. <clears throat> and if you look at the accounts of, of how they buried, like, um, so they, it was kind of like mummification, right? They had burial uh, uh, cloths that they wrapped around the body and they poured over a hundred pounds of myrrh and other oils um, that adhered to this mixture um, that it made it very difficult to remove, as St. John Chrysostom um, explains. And because of this, it was kind of like a, almost a cocoon shaped um, uh, that, that probably the disciples witnessed this because when St. John came and looked and when St. Peter came and looked in, in the tomb, they believed. Um, not probably not just because you know the the handkerchief that was around the the head of the Lord was folded and placed in a place by itself, but also because it would have been very difficult to remove the the body um, from from this you know the hundred pounds of oils and mixture with with um, the burial uh, clothes. Um, in addition to that, the round stone. Um, was uh, probably about two tons, um, and it took many men to move. Um, there was uh, the Roman guard, which was probably four to 16 men, right, sleeping um, uh, in shifts in a circle. Um, so, and if, if the story that was circulating at the time that the disciples stole the body from the from the tomb. If that were true, th those soldiers who were guarding the tomb would have been put to death. But what happened instead? They were paid. <laughs> they were paid hush money to, to, to quiet um, the notion that uh, the Lord rose from the dead. Um, and they knew what happened. <laughs> um, so, and the other proof that the Lord rose from the dead was what happened to the disciples? They were on, on Good Friday, they ran for their lives. They closed the door on themselves and hid for fear. What happened a few days later? They were proclaiming the resurrection boldly and uh, afraid, uh, not afraid of anyone but the Lord. Um, to the point they were imprisoned and beaten and, and released and they continued their preaching. Um, if they were bold enough to preach and then when it came to death, um, and, and they were lying, they would have fessed up, right? <laughs> um, but no, they only even proclaimed even more boldly. Um, so this transformation is also testifying to the truth of the resurrection of the Lord. So these are just some, of course you have to believe, but these are just some um, uh, precautions that tried to fight against the, the, the truth of the resurrection, but only um, helped prove the resurrection even more to those who are willing to um, believe.
Um, another thing to uh, think about is, like we were saying for the incarnation, when the Lord took our form, he paved the way for us in everything. And he did everything for us and with us in mind and in heart. Um, and as, uh, sorry, it's a, a typo, but as Victorinus, um, one of the uh, apostolic fathers, um, he wrote, what was fulfilled in Christ in the flesh was this, that he should save souls, us, and also cause immortality to be given to the flesh through resurrection, right? So he took our form, he took our flesh, he took humanity to himself, right? United himself uh, to us, right? In physically, um, and gave life, gave, gave eternal life to the flesh. Why? Because he rose from the dead and he lives forevermore. So as with him, we shall be like him. Um, and how he says this, he accomplished by the power of his cross because he couldn't rise until he died, <laughs> right? When we rise and are changed, the body in which we have uh, been humbled will be raised. So just like he rose from the dead, we will rise from the dead on that day. It will be of the same and an equal from the body of Christ's own glory. So too shall we be spirits as he in himself is spirit. <laughs> Sorry for the typos. Um, also, um, uh, so as his spiritual body did not cease to be human, our human bodies will not cease to be spiritual, meaning um, God is spirit. He took our form, right? Um, he took human flesh, right? He died in the flesh. He rose um, in the spiritual body, and that spiritual body will also be granted to us, as St. Paul also explains um, in his epistle. Um, in, in Philippians 3.21, he says, he will transform our lowly body, our physical human flesh, that it may be conformed to his glorious body, uh, according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. Um, so, um, meaning we will live forever. We will have a spiritual body that doesn't hunger, doesn't thirst, doesn't get tired, um, doesn't weaken, doesn't get sick, doesn't die. Um, this is what is waiting for us, you know, after, after the second coming. Um, uh, and, uh, but he shows what will happen to us with himself on the day of the resurrection. Okay, um, and as the priest prays a um, silent prayer in the back of the church when he's raising incense, um, he says, through his cross and his holy resurrection of Christ, um, he returned man to paradise once more. Okay, so we are returned through the cross and, and, and death and resurrection of Christ. Okay, um, even though it hasn't been fulfilled yet, but he paved the way for us. Okay, so obviously after 40 days, after the Lord rose from the dead and appeared to many people, he ascended finally on the Mount of Olives, um, in which the 11 disciples and St. Mary witnessed. Um, and uh, this is a great feast in our church. It's 40 days always after the resurrection. Um, and even the Lord speaks about this in, his, in the gospel, according to St. John, right? He says, no one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the son of man who is in heaven, right? Because God, as God, he, he is everywhere. He is, in, he is always in heaven, right? But he descended when he took Christ, when Christ took flesh, right? On the, in the nativity, when he, when he was born, um, uh, uh, and he died, rose from the dead, and he ascended to heaven, okay? And like we said, um, this ascension for man has not happened yet. Um, the, the man has been restored to paradise, but not necessarily uh, ascended to heaven, okay? Um, and uh, if he, like we said, if he didn't rise, we wouldn't rise. If he didn't ascend to heaven, we would not be able to ascend to heaven. Um, 
and we wouldn't always be with the Lord as we will be, St. Paul says in First Thessalonians 4.17, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and we shall always be with the Lord. That's our goal. That's our final resting place is to always be with the Lord. Okay. Um, and uh, when he ascended to heaven, St. Athanasius speaks about this, and he says, uh, he who bestows birth on all others so that they come into being, this is in order that he may transfer our birth to himself, that we may long, no longer turn as dust to dust, like what happened from Adam until Christ, but as being joined with the word from heaven, Logos, Christ, we'll be united to Christ. We may be carried up with him into heaven. So when he ascended to heaven in the same body that he took, um, he paved the way for humanity, but also there's a part of humanity because he, he, he became man, right? So he paved the way for us, but also there is, it's, it's kind of hard to explain, but like we said, um, he took our form, he took flesh. So there's flesh that was transformed to the spiritual body that is in heaven now, right? So um, it, in a sense, has already been fulfilled because, you know, um, man is in heaven, right? The man, <laughs> the, the, the Christ, who is still fully God and fully man in his person. Um, hope that makes uh, sense. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> so he returns in his glorified humanity in the ascension of Christ. Uh, humanity crossed the threshold of eternity. And, and humanity is at the right hand of the Father because Christ is at the right hand of the Father. Um, again, this is um, uh, not a physical location because the Father, God is spirit, right? There's no right hand or left hand. Um, but here is the, the hand, uh, the right hand of glory, of honor, of blessing, right? Um, and that's why the church says this. So then after the Lord has spoken to them, as St. Mark says, he was received up to heaven and sat down at the right hand uh, of God. Um, and even Christ prophesied this, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming in the clouds. This is the second coming. Um, <clears throat> so Christ doesn't leave us by his ascension. He ascends in glory, not to be apart from us, to be, but to be more perfectly united with us and to bring us even closer to God the Father, right? Through the Holy Spirit, of course. Um, so <clears throat> just as Christ was present with his church on earth, he is also um, we are also present with him in a, a mysterious way in heaven, okay? Um, so this is what we believe when we celebrate the liturgy, right? Because in the liturgy, um, heaven and earth are united. God and man are united through the person of Christ and through the sacrifice, the death and resurrection and ascension of our Lord, okay? So this is kind of like the end of the story of Christ um, that... Um, the end of the gospel is ascension. Like, okay, we made it. <laughs> it's the finish line. Um, and, and, and that's what awaits all of us who, who believe and who trust in our Savior. Um, so <clears throat> um, uh, this is uh, probably a, a good place to, to stop and to contemplate on um, and until we start going more in depth uh, towards um, the the second coming, we already uh, described in brief what will happen. Um, but uh, God willing, next time we'll we'll go more in in detail when it comes um, and He is coming again in His glory to to judge the living and the dead. Uh, uh, God be with you all and grant us the blessing of His resurrection and ascension. Glory be to Him now and from into the age all ages. Amen.